Hi, it's Slater. This video is an add-on to a detailed video about hot wire cutting foam paper. That is, making thin sheets from blocks of expanded polystyrene foam for walk-along gliders. Or thicker ones for dragonfly helicopter wings. Getting the right foam thickness for the gliders requires very precise positioning of the hot wire. In the past video, I featured a special bronze part for doing that. The machined groove lifts and lowers the hot wire. It works well, but wouldn't it be good if you could use an ordinary cheap bolt that's available locally? This video shows two ways to do that. You cannot just have a bolt that's threaded in like this. When the bolt is turning and going down, the wire against the thread is moving up, so it doesn't actually move at all. One strategy that does work is to drill out a hole that's a little bit too big for the bolt. It slips through. But the hole has to have a bottom. Here I've flipped the board over and I'm gluing coins on the bottom. I also made some hot glue feet so it's stable. The bolts slide in. When rigged with wire, the turning bolt does not move up or down, but the wire against the thread does. You can hook the car battery charger directly to the bolts. I'm cutting a thick piece for a dragonfly helicopter wing. These are actually quarter inch or M6 threaded rods. A finer thread like this would give more precise adjustments. A different strategy, even a bit more precise, is to add a screw that's flat on the bottom here and usually has a round head on top. The wire's always a little higher on the outside screw. When you turn this inside screw, it places the wire very precisely to the right height, both down and up. As with all hot wire cutters, the resistance wire is kept under some pull tension, in this case rubber bands. I hook the car battery charger to the outside screws. The sharp ends of the round head screw are sticking out the bottom, so again I'm making little hot glue feet to raise the bottom up. Thanks to Seikino-san in Japan for coming up with this design. Thin nickel chromium resistance wire is very cheap and you could even scavenge it from a broken soldering iron. You should be able to adjust the tension. I think it's easier to make adjustable rubber loops than it is to move these anchor screws. I cut and tie into an overhand knot. If you try to move the knot, it'll probably break. But if you rub in some slippery soap, you can pull next to the knot and move it. We attach the wire by kind of hooking around, then twist. If you don't twist enough, it'll pull off. Spreading the wires as you twist helps prevent that. I hook at one end, then I stretch the rubber at that end as I hook the other end or else it could break getting it on. This is just an update. It does not replace the other video that talks about foam versus paper, how foam is not all the same, how to rough cut foam blocks first, calculating density, how to control heat and where to get foam, etc. I know this will sound self-serving, but even if you plan to cut your own foam, and I encourage that, it's still a good idea to buy a few gliders. Most people waste time trying to figure out the right thickness and rigidity for the gliders. Well, that's it for now. Thank you for spreading walk-along gliders to the four corners of the earth. <laughs> I'm <laughs> <laughs>